Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only, your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. Brad, production note here. We have an update for the girls. We do. Yes. Um, we have ramped up our oh, studio yes. here. We did. Yes, I am now uh, in a studio. No, I'm still in the basement. Um, <laughs> I am still in a basement, but I brought out my Yeti microphone from storage. She got a microphone, ladies. Give it up for her. She's Isn't got she a amazing? new microphone. Uh, yes. And so your mic this, is on. Unlike... Yeah, you can turn it, turn it up, and it should sound like I'm in the same room. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so. The girls noticed last week, they were like, oh my gosh, you guys back together? I was like, no, get out of my house. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you're still I don't far want a stranger away coming a... into my house, Whoopi <laughs> Goldberg. A foreign land known as Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one day. I was actually just looking at apartments in the city. I'm starting to, oh. starting to sniff out rentals again, but we'll see. You know, I would like to come back vaccinated. We'll see what happens. I'm in line. I think I'm at number 500,000 in line. So I'm just waiting. 800 million, 4,000. There's not even 800 million people. Is there? I don't even know. Uh, No, no, no. I think it's like... I'm going to have to look that one up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's only like 8 million people in New York. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. We're back with another week. It feels like a new day. Has come. Yeah. Well, still, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Not fully yet, but like, did you sleep easier this week? I did. I absolutely did. But I do think that's mostly because I've started yoga. However, oh. <laughs> <laughs> still in my basement, but I do at home yoga now. But I do Shake think it's also promo. because, yeah, <laughs> I think it's also, uh, yeah, for the obvious reasons of, um, you know, it's really been every Wednesday has been some massive event in our country. Unprecedented. I'm tired of hearing that word. I could never I hear that word again and be good. Yeah, I would like a uh, to have like one precedented. I would day like a where... lot of precedented. <laughs> yeah, where years. I'm just bored. Yeah. <laughs> that like, would be oh, cool. It's Sunday, I get to sleep. Precedent. A day of rest, never for us. But yeah, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> oh man! Well, one day we will go back to our precedented <laughs> doing a podcast in person. That's very true. Yes, perhaps sooner rather than later, depending on um, yeah, you know when I come back. So we'll see. I'm back. <laughs> the first words when I step out of Grand Central. <laughs> yeah. I'm back. Uh, well, as always, we would like to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash legends only. Now, um, I'm not going to tell the girls yet. You know what I'm talking oh. about? Well, we did put up a poll. Yes, but well, not that the other thing that happened this week. There's some things happening. Oh. Change. I'll tell the girls maybe next week. Okay. Yes. That's very vague. I love drama. <laughs> you um, really do. So, we hate surprises and yeah, teases. We, so we'll we just constantly hate. tell you to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. An announcement of an announcement of an announcement, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but long story short is, um, you know, there, there's been a lot of promises that we've made on the Patreon <laughs> yes. that we have not been able to... Um, Provide at this time. However, that is all changing very soon. It's hard soon. in a panorama, but we're getting through. <laughs> yeah, just casual pandemic. <laughs> but uh, to let everyone know, and this is super vague, but that is changing very soon. In addition to Bradley's upgrades, there are other things on the way. Stay tuned. It's going to be an exciting spring. A new spring day has spring. come. <laughs> a new a year without rain and a I don't know where I'm going with that. A year without something else. We'll just say that. Oh, that's Um, for sure. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Some (laughs) some of the girls know what's going on behind the scenes. But um, anywho, our Patreon Legends Only fans, thank you all so much for your support and for chatting with us on Discord and um, exciting plans coming very soon. I'm literally (laughs) shaking. I Anyway. Las Vegas residency. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Vegas, let me hear y'all make some noise. Um, <laughs> well, shall we make some noise for some of the girls this week? Yes, and they certainly did make some noise this week. <laughs> it got loud. <laughs> okay. It got very loud, yes. Yeah, spoiler alert. Now, I... Where do we even begin? Well, there was an inauguration. Yeah, we have a new president. Um, uh-huh. <sighs> Give it up for her. 
<laughs> Did you see that tweet that was like the first three Wednesdays in 2021? That's what I was referring. Yeah, every Wednesday has been insurrection, impeachment, inauguration. Yeah. Can we just, um, can we keep it, um, what would be another I word? What was that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, you know me. I'm not give a- us our stimmies. <laughs> I'm not really good at uh, what's, I don't even know the word to describe what the book of words is. What's that thing called? The thesaurus? The book of words? No, oh, uh, uh, the I'm book a, of words. Dictionary. Yes. I'm not a good dictionary <laughs> of words. Well, um, investment should be the word because it should be our stimulus checks coming into our bank accounts. Oh, that yeah. That should be next. We'll- I think we should have that conversation. I think we should definitely have that conversation. Yes. Uh, well, we have a new president, everyone. Give it up yep. for him and her. Um, yeah, I mean, I sound like I'm not excited, even though I like am. But like, can we also just can I say something? Well, we're all very tired. But yes, <laughs> can I, I would like to say something. Um, <laughs> can we go back to a time where the people that we elect are held accountable for like, you know, being elected to like work for us? How about that? Yeah. Public service. How about that? Where's the service? <laughs> yeah, I would like to see it. I would like to see it. So now it's time to get in there and we're going to get shit done. Get to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Britney That's said in right. that one tweet. What tweet? Remember when she told Congress to get to work? Oh. Yeah. She's like, you better work, bitch. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. Well, she wasn't lying. So it's time to uh, hold them accountable and get some progress in motion. Long overdue. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. And to kick it all off, <laughs> we had an inauguration, which frankly, I was pretty anxious about the whole day because of uh, everything going on in this country and the fact that it was in the open air and that it wasn't, you know, a virtual event was pretty nerve wracking, I think, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, They held it down. There was very thankfully nothing out of norm. I mean, things looked a little different, obviously, because of the pandemic, but there were no incidents, mercifully. And we had some leading ladies sing us through the day and night, and they certainly uh, made America gay again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, nobody was nobody killed. Nobody was killed at Stonewall. That's uh, too soon. And that well, <sighs> let's go through the performances of the inauguration, and also maybe just like takeaways from the inauguration. So we kick off with our Stephanie. Lady Gaga performs. My Stephanie Jeromato. <laughs> now, can I just say, anytime I hear someone get introduced to do that song, um, ladies and gentlemen, I say I say that song as if it's like, <laughs> yeah, as if it's just like a flop single on the charts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that chart bottoming smash, <laughs> the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anytime I hear an announcer be like, "Please rise for our national anthem," I always think of those memes of just like the TikTok, the meme. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Ruined forever. Mm -hmm. Like everything else on the internet, but yes, please rise for Stephanie Germanata. And she comes out in, uh, Katniss Everdeen, (laughs) hunger games, cosplay girl on fire, like bottom half. And then top she's giving you mocking J one dove promo, which everyone thought of you. Obviously this was your moment. Um, a thousand doves. Yeah, she really <laughs> did that. That was a nod to you. Uh, you promoted a thousand doves so much in 2020 that she was like, "I'll give him one dove." There could be 999 underneath that red skirt. There could be. Oh my god! Imagine if she just lifted it up and <sighs> they all just flew out. Just lift me up. <laughs> oh, there was a concept there. <laughs> <laughs> there literally was. And they were like, due to security concerns, we cannot let you release 999 doves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, she delivers a full-bodied, very forceful, powerful, star-spangled. Very, I mean, that is, that's our Gaga. I thought she nailed it. I thought she did fucking amazing. Yeah. I mean, and also I got several messages from, like, people circa college being like, wow, she's got a great voice. Like, people who hated on her in the early years, I'm like, we've known this. This is old. When are we going to get over that whole, like, you really couldn't see past the meat dress? Like, you don't, like, of course she has a great voice. So I just, it's one of those things where it's like the general public still can't wrap their head around the fact that she can sing because of her theatrics. And it's like... I'm very honored to be in the presence of so many locals. 
Well, I'm just glad she got a chance to like really prove it just and relatively stripped down for her. Obviously, she had a giant fucking dove on her, but otherwise it was fairly muted, you know, focus on the voice there. And very theatrical, obviously. I loved I loved the staring at the flag while it was still there. Yeah. She stood and delivered. That. Yeah, I did. I and, also uh, love the white uh, suit that she had on, the, the coat, the mm, pre-outfit. Just a fantastic... Yeah, we'll get to coats in a, later on, I'm sure. But yeah, she really did look fantastic. Um, the... <laughs> A picture of her like staring down it, w- it was in the capitol building where she looked like princess leia slash star wars mandalorian yeah there was the one inside <laughs> and yeah. then there was the one outside it was very oh god the meme of her talking to the national guard yeah and everyone's like where's madonna find her <laughs> it goes yeah. rain on me and then we all jump get it absolutely that was memed many times fantastic yeah she without trying always manages to get memed i thought she met the moment i really do oh yeah absolutely i think it was a fantastic performance from her i think she was so gracious and humble and just really there for the event and also that did you watch the feed of her walking away and her being like have a great inauguration to kamala and biden and then she told michelle that she looked amazing it was just a very sweet, very gaga kindness. I know. I saw her online kindness moment with uh, Hillary. Oh yeah, <laughs> that too. I um, just like imagine her like being like, "Oh, you know, I really love Alice." <laughs> Should be the next single. Like in my mind, I was just like, "What did Hillary Clinton love off of Chromatica?" Is the question that I want to answer. <laughs> I have no idea, but she definitely mingled with all of them oh and my favorite of course which i captioned which was the moment where we cross into our next performer miss jennifer lopez um and they had a brief exchange sitting there which i found hilarious they don't really they've never really had a crossover moment except for the fact that like they've both worked uh with red one (laughs) so i just love imagining them being like so i saw that you were working with red one um uh but yeah, that was, I always love when like pop queens like interact that don't normally. So that was a good moment. But yeah, and then we get to <laughs> JLo's performance, <laughs> which I will say. Okay, like how many things have we predicted on this fucking podcast? We've predicted some things. So, some say that we speak things into existence to a fault. And sometimes we, yes, yes. Why? What are you going to say? I was just going to say that. I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we joked about it last week. I literally right. joked about her singing "Let's Get Loud." <clears throat> right last yeah. week. I will say, and it, it it was still like funny that she plugged "Let's Get Loud." She made it make more sense, in my opinion, uh, during the Super Bowl with "Born in the USA," the kids in cages, and "Let's Get Loud." Like that kind of was the political statement then, and it's still a political statement now that she said like the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish, and she said let's get loud but it was like slightly less uh i think that was probably more lost in translation and it just came across as like promo kicking off the it's my birthday tour um (laughs) (laughs) it's my party tour which was fantastic i talked all about that but yes still you know very impactful just (laughs) i'll never get over the thing is it's so funny about it is yeah I 1000% hear and see what she was saying in the message of it. 100%. And it's so smart. And like you said with the Super Bowl, like it was so brilliant and it was so well done and it was so smart and I was tearing up. And so it's like, on one hand, the seriousness of it makes complete sense. Yeah. But then on the other hand, (laughs) it is so fucking funny like it is it's, so funny and it will like i just live wish she like ripped off the outfit and there was like you know a tight latex outfit and she's like all right everybody it's time for louboutins literally like <laughs> washington dc Louboutin. let me hear y'all make some noise and it's just flags <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah i really wish that happened i wished we got a waiting for tonight <laughs> but i'll take it she honestly i she's really been hustling hustlers promo uh, like to do the New Year's Eve one and now the inauguration. Like, God, she's just everywhere already in 2021 again. God bless. We definitely, that was a, a very funny moment, but also it made sense. <laughs> what I love about this though is that it will be iconic in her history now as like a legend. Like, 
Let's oh, yeah. Get Loud is now going to be like, I think about when we saw Britney at Radio City and mm. it was like, who is it? And like, it became a thing. Like, right. this is now going to be the thing that more people bring up forever. Yeah, I'm just mad. She should have just sealed the deal and had the Versace dress. Yeah. <laughs> she should have. <laughs> but I do love a slight stunt a slight promo stunt but it did make sense it tied into the the message it's just when when you reference your own song i think that's like funny at a political event versus the super bowl i think that's why it was so especially funny yeah and it was so uh everything else was so tense and serious that it yeah really just oh yeah absolutely broke through it <laughs> and then amy uh, told the at the end being like well that was great so <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, dance for your poppy. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. Poot, poot, beat a, uh, what did they say on the news the other day? Did you see oh, that? I, no, I did not. So who was that guy? It's some white guy. I forget. Who cares? Yeah. Um, he <laughs> called him Poot Beat a Judge. He was like, Poot Beat a Judge. And I'm like, <laughs> Up next, the masterful performance of Mayor Poot Buttigieg in his Senate confirmation hearing this morning. Oh, relative to Poot Lovato. Yeah. (laughs) Poot and Pete. Uh, Poot and Pete. Yes, but the entertainment of the night didn't end there. We also had, for the first time, because the pandemic forced them to not have the inaugural ball, they instead had the Celebrating America special which they were mocking on TikTok as looking like Skyrim because of the way they would zoom into Joe Biden or whoever. Like, the way that they had it was so, like, a video game almost. The I mean, at this point, it could be. It, it could be. That's also true. But uh, newfound uh, Pokemon spokeswoman and mother, Catherine Hudson, ha- pull, pulls a stunt and does a surprise appearance because she didn't announce this until the... The night before where she showed an array of patriotic microphones and it was like, oh, she's coming. And she did. She arrived in D.C. to perform what else but firework against a backdrop of a comical amount of fireworks. Were they CGI? I don't think so. I was so I think confused they, by it. I think they blew the ball budget on fireworks, to be honest. <laughs> they yeah. were like, well, we don't need these. Uh, we don't need the flower arrangements. Just buy 20 more of these also like did people really need to hear that after the that fireworks day? yeah oh exactly i'm sure everyone's like tense as hell immediately i was sitting there i was like oh wow this is so pretty but those uh everyone in dc is probably shaking yeah their windows and doors were i'm sure the i will say the praise on social media she probably got her most many people were saying like that might have been her best firework performance ever I think we should have that conversation. (laughs) And I think she got a lot of praise for it, generally. I think it was a a high note for her. I thought it was great. I thought the the new arrangement is the correct terminology, right? Ooh, yes. Was beautiful. I thought she looked great. It was very uh, somber. It wasn't, you know, over the top. No, except for the fireworks. I really think they were very flamboyant. Yes, well, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yes. And, you know, what's more American than Katy Perry singing Firework in Washington, D.C.? I think she did a great job. I think this was also, I don't want to call it redemption or anything. I just feel like because she hasn't been as public lately, although she's killing it on American Idol, it's been like another high note for her in, in her career, you know, like since the Super Bowl, since whatever, another event moment for her i agree and now she'll have pokemon for the rest of 2021 so who knows what's coming next electric i'm excited for electric me too i'm excited for whatever she's coordinating it seems like some sort of year-long ordeal of some kind so i don't know if she's like curating some sort of release and then also releasing the song but seems very involved so oh my god what if they make a katie pokemon um (laughs) they will not do that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just like a little wig <laughs> ketty i think she should go um electronic oh that's new i don't yeah. think she's considered that before <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i don't know zed and the 365 moment i don't think that was really a moment oh i love 365 yeah but i don't think it did much for her well that's unfortunate for everyone who didn't listen to it they should yeah yeah no it's true 
It's true. No, it's That's true. why we're here. <laughs> that is true. Doing we're here. Justice for 365. Service. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As the elected officials that you have chosen to listen to on this day, <laughs> we are serving you by telling you to stream 365 by Catherine Hudson. <laughs> now available That's for That's right. <laughs> we're your public servants and we're telling you what you need to do to improve your life. And that includes Katie's electronic foray with Zed. That was fighting for gay rights mm-hmm. and people were yeah. killed. <laughs> Speaking of gay rights. Yeah. Well, do we have any other closing thoughts on the inauguration takeaways? I'm just happy it's over. Me too. I feel like, I don't know. I just want peace, you know? We all do. And it's streaming now on Taylor Swift's Folklore. Get oh. it now. <laughs> Oh, speaking of Taylor Swift, we don't even have this in here. Oh, Her yes, new... you, you just, yeah. It's uh, not new, Taylor... right? Am I like three well, weeks it's late? Like a, it's about, you're about a week late, so not at all. Okay. It's, um, she dropped the bonus tracks from Evermore onto streaming that oh. were appropriately titled for the passage of the torch yeah. of this election, we'll say. I'm really enjoying Time to Go. <laughs> That's um, basically Mariah tweeting out, get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I I agree. There's so much ever more content to still, I still need to deep dive into it. I I felt like I wasn't done with folklore and now I have to really put more energy into ever more. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that was the inauguration or whatever. And now, (laughs) now, you know, (laughs) and now life is different and yet the same. And we are trucking ahead. And the first thing to happen in Biden's America is we have a new leader of the LGBTQ community. That's right, everyone. She, you know her best from uh, Dance Moms. We're all gonna have fun! (laughs) And we're all gonna be gay because Jojo Siwa is coming out. (laughs) And now we all have to stand. It's legally required. Um, This was actually crazy because I feel like she tried to do it three times and nobody was like willing to be like, that's actually her coming out because her whole shtick is to be covered in rainbows all the time so everyone's like i mean that's just what she does and then she's like no i'm really gay yeah wasn't that the first thing everyone was like why is everyone calling her gay like she always wears rainbows like yeah and then it cut to like miss juicy's live chat where all the comments were like oh my god queen lesbian and she's like what which by the way that meme is iconic that is a fantastic meme not gay (laughs) i am not gay I am not gay. <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> Why is everyone saying that? <laughs> and at first I thought that's what they were doing to JoJo, but then Me too. she posted. So it was like she posted in like a gay equivalent hype house of some kind. I'm not even sure. I just know that like all the creators were gay, I guess, dancing. Yeah, what is that like, all about? I don't There seems to be so many different hype houses now, which is such a flop. Maybe it's like the Gen Z equivalent of real world? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, kind of. Like, it's yeah. like mini reality shows. Yeah. So. Oh my God, no, we should do. Oh no, what? Wait, this is a really good idea and I shouldn't be screaming this, but like iconic. What? Gay Twitter hype house. No, Gay it would Twitter end for from 2012. <laughs> <laughs> no one would leave alive, first of all. Let's get them all together. I'll send out a text. I'll be like, listen. Reunion couches. Remember in 2011 when you tweeted that? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you subtweeted me and you subfaved me? Oh my God. <laughs> Legendary. No, oh, I'm God. I'm good with everyone now. Like I have no hangups, but like how funny would that be? I mean, definitely if we were growing, if TikTok was hitting at that time, who knows? There could have been an NYC gay hype, hype house. Would have made sense. I'm happy I was not part of that. But anyway. Jojo is like dancing with these gays and the caption was like, now you're one of us or something. And it was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> then, but the one that really sealed the deal was she posted a picture that her cousin bought her a shirt that was like best gay cousin ever about her. And then people were like, well, okay, so you're really gay. And then she just did a live stream and she was talking about the overflow of support and everything. And it was like, okay, okay. So this is like really, really confirming it, which is really powerful. She's 17 years old, I believe now. She's the head of an empire of bows and rainbows. All these suburban moms spent thousands of dollars on her merch for their kids. Oh, they're and shaking. They're shaking. You know, this is like a pretty brave move of her because, you know. We pay your bills. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody like angrily tweeting at her right now. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely she it was riskier for her because she has an empire right now and decided to live authentically as herself. So we have to stand because I think it was coming out as bold, but coming out as a kid, as a children's entertainer, knowing that there's such a conservative base like underneath a lot of that is is pretty bold. So I'm proud of her. And now we're going to have to stand. I'm going to have to learn all those annoying ass songs. But we'll say she's a dancer. Yeah, she is. You know, the signs were there. What about Kendall? (laughs) What about my daughter? Hopefully someone out there gets the reference. I don't care if she's gay. What about my daughter? Kendall did not have a solo last week, Abby. (laughs) Oh my God. I wonder if we got an Abby comment yet on the situation. Yeah. They're cool. She was always been. Yeah, I'm sure it's. Yeah, I'm sure she'll. Her and be an um, ally. Yeah, um, Abby and JoJo's <laughs> mom were always like, for the most part, good. That's good. Yeah. So now we have that, and if you ever want to look it up, she does a whole lot of Lady Gaga dancing, and it's pretty good. So the new queen has arrived. Put your bows up. <clears throat> <laughs> Put your fucking bows up. That's that's basically that. Yeah. And uh, speaking of gay rights, which. Um, which uh, in in real world will hopefully start getting restored. Um, oh right, yeah. But also already making progress there. Yes, but also um, gay rights happening on our screens and in our ears. Truly, yes. This this was the week that Miss Kelly Clarkson. She's really been nailing it with the karaoke all always. But I I don't know if somebody's getting gayer on her team or what. But like the selections lately have been getting increasingly gay and. She decided to go for none other than Miss Kylie, can't get you out of my head, giving us rainbow lighting in the background. Literal gay rights. Literal gay rights. And then belting out the end of it was just, it was perfect. I'm very happy for Kylie representation in the media, in the US, obviously. It's a fight that I fight every day. It's not an easy one, but it is one. You know, I have to fight against the Google algorithm. There's another Kylie that has overtaken her Google images and her (laughs) SEO, but we have to fight against the system. We have to change the Google results if we want change in America. (laughs) Well, you helped me look her up, so... I did, yes. Everyone's got to be looking her up. Yes, she did that Kylie promo. Kylie's promoting Real Groove, the song that she did. (laughs) I'm not taking that off. No, you should never take that off. The Studio 2054 mix of Real Groove out now on Spotify. (laughs) And some cool mixes. Yeah. Anyway, congrats to Kylie for the promo and to Kelly for slaying another Kelly-Oki, as usual. At this point, we need like a now that's what I call Kelly-Oki. Like we need- That's a really good idea. I don't know what the licensing would be like or what she needs to do there, but- It would probably be a lot. Yeah, but- did I say on here that if I ever win the lottery, I want Kelly to sing every song in my music library? Yes, you did. A okay. few times. <laughs> well, I'll just leave that here. So if I win the lottery- We're manifesting that one extra hard. Yeah. If we become millionaires from Legends Only, mm-hmm. we will um, attempt to purchase the music rights to have Kelly Clarkson continue to sing gay rights songs <laughs> forever. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Subscribe to patreon.com slash legends only. Legends only. We'll start saving now (laughs) and we'll see you in 50 years. That's right. Wow. Well, that was actually the perfect segue. Speaking of 50 years, it hasn't quite been 50, but there are some important pop anniversaries, actually. It's how much I've aged. It is in the past three three weeks. weeks. (laughs) Um, And it actually involves... The queens we just mentioned. This couldn't be a better segue. And a big shout out once again to my friend who runs Pop Textbook on Instagram. He really nails all of the both, like the the, the smash hits, but also the should have been smash hits and just gives all of our queens so much love. We have some important anniversaries. The first, I, I know Kyle's going to look this one up. <laughs> it is the 20th anniversary of Kylie's Your Disco Needs You, a song that truly shaped my homosexuality at a very young age. Some would say the gayest song in existence. It is a call to arms, a call to the disco. It is an anthem for the pandemic. It's very, very fitting. Kylie Disco, everything kind of ties in with the song. Should have been performed at Infinite Disco, but it's fine. What a moment. What a gay, gay ass, camp ass video. Just perfect. If you haven't heard it, go listen. Go watch her various live performances, the operatic operatic high note 
all of it. She's done a version in Japanese, in German, in French. It's just, it's a gay, it's a gay classic. It was literally fighting for gay rights. And it predicted Grindr with the line, desperately seeking someone willing to travel. (laughs) Okay, I'm looking that one up. (laughs) (laughs) I can't say enough about it. So shout out to Miss Kylie. Now, one that T. Kyle and I will be able to weigh in on more is the 15th anniversary of a breakaway smash. Underrated, in my opinion. Yes. Miss Kelly Clarkson's Walk Away. Which is a choice that I chose to make this week. Say that. (laughs) (laughs) You Um, saw it was the 15th anniversary and you said, you know what? She took a risk, took a chance. She made made a a point. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We do need to do a deep dive of Breakaway, by the way. We desperately do. I feel, especially now that I know it was the 15th anniversary, it would be fitting to come full circle. Yeah, we're lining them up. Where... Yes, exactly. The year was 2000. I don't know. What's what's now minus 15? <laughs> 21. It's um, uh, 06. 06. 05 but into 06. Bre- yeah, yeah. The campaign was 05, 06. Okay. Walk Away is a lesser appreciated bop off of Breakaway, but no less fantastic. One of my favorite bridges, I think, on the album, the way she goes off. And her hair in this music video. True. Ugh. We need to revisit this. Oh my god, I'm we do. We chills. need to like give our full thoughts on it. This album's at iconic. A later date. Yeah, but uh, walk away. Fifteenth anniversary. We salute you. Now it's also. I can't believe it happened at the same. These don't feel like they happened in the same time. They to don't me at all. But if you can believe it, Madonna was shooting her video for Sorry and releasing Sorry at the same time, which we do happen to have a deep dive for Confessions on a Dance Floor. We do? Yeah. I just can't believe that Madonna was doing DDR in that video at the same time that Kelly was walking away. Wow. What an iconic era. Truly. Perhaps her best hair, too. That floofy, floofy hair. (laughs) Purple (laughs) suit. What the what? Her little floof in the hair. It was it was it was very Farrah Fawcett-y. The wave? <laughs> yeah. Floof. Okay. <laughs> Every week we'll be giving an award to our favorite floof Floofiest of the week. Hair of the week. <laughs> yes. Uh so congrats, ladies. That's been um what a time to to be old. <laughs> yeah, sure is, isn't it? <laughs> Speaking of the youth coming up and chasing our coattails, um uh, <laughs> Madonna's daughter. Noted trendsetter, icon, legend, elusive model loose, and just generally queen of pop without releasing music. Lourdes joined Instagram publicly, officially, for the first time this week, and has already caused complete mayhem, which just, you know, like mother, like daughter, little star. Uh, So she joins Instagram, Lourdes Leon, and she makes her profile photo Michelle Visage saying no. If you didn't know, Michelle is a Madonna super stan. Uh, If you don't know Michelle because somehow you're not gay and listening to this, she's most notably now a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race and has always been a Madonna super fan and once got a cease and desist from her. (laughs) Legendary. It's like me when I got a cease and desist from Luann De Lesseps. Same legendary cease cyst and deceased and <laughs> so uh i shouted out michelle when i made that announcement on twitter and michelle rt'd and called her my daughter which i love that uh she'll probably get hit with that cease and desist next though she'll get another one from lordez <laughs> lola would like you to stop tweeting about her you want to bring but my she child up would. in this bitch yeah <laughs> Oh, that season of Bad Girls Club was so legendary. Oh, yeah. She said my child. No, my daughter. Whatever. Yeah, she she claimed Lola. In typical Stan fashion, whenever there is like some sort of connection to your fave, there are those fans who decide to inject themselves into their faves' personal lives. Needless to say, all the Madonna fans clamored to her comments and were like, oh my god, remember the Sticky and Sweet tour? <laughs> like, really? Just... <laughs> Just being like the nerdiest, most embarrassing fans. And she (laughs) replied to all of them and either told them to go suck a dick, that they have no life, to go wash their ass. (laughs) And then my favorite was, I want you to start your singing career. And she said, I'll sing at your funeral. (laughs) She's got a point. She's got a point. It's both funny and also like, I hope people get the point that like this young woman 
is her own person and she can't just be Madonna's daughter. You have to like let her have her own life. Don't just go into her comments and ask about Madonna. It's so boring. Must be something in the water or that I'm Madonna's <laughs> daughter. Um, how old is she? She's 24 now. So it's not even like, you know, she's a woman now. Like it's like she is her own person and she should like she's doing the modeling thing. She's got gigs. And she you know wants what's so to have wild? Presence. She's literally, and I know we use this word like all the time, but like she's actually an icon. Yeah. And really hasn't done anything. Nope. But, but like also, she's just has this like legendary status because of the brief elusiveness of her. Yeah. No, it's true. She's only made like very small appearances on social media. So it's like it makes her even more like interesting. Yeah. Because it's, everyone's just like, what's she doing? Like but your mom the is literally thing. the queen of pop. Could you imagine? Like, <laughs> I, oh, I, my mom's the queen of pop? I, I couldn't. But here's like kind of the crazy thing. So she's 24. Madonna didn't really like debut until 24 because like everybody and Lucky Star and all that started happening by like 24, 25. So in a lot of ways. Yeah, they didn't she, have TikTok it, back in the 1700s. The, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm getting canceled. Exactly. Immediately canceled, canceled by the little Madonsters once again. Yeah. <sighs> but yes, no, the, but the kind of the crazy thing is like, this is really when Madonna started at the age that Laura does is now. So it's not crazy to think that she's only just getting started with whatever she does. I really don't think she's going to do music, at least not yet, but we'll see. One thing's for sure. She's fucking gorgeous. That one picture yeah. that she's uploaded of her flipping off the camera. I'm just like, ah, queen. <laughs> Uh, but she knows her power and uh, she that's it looks what it like, is oh yeah it's she, she holds so much power and is just like she does. suck a dick yeah <laughs> suck a dick so brilliant talented show stopping incredible never been done before well we salute Lola's arrival to Instagram it seems like it's going to be very entertaining and I'm excited to see what she does with that if anything, or she just tells people to suck dicks, which also I am in full support of. Speaking of her Michelle Visage photo, Drag Race, I'm all caught up. Are you all caught up? I started my engines and I am fully in this race at this point. Yes. Uh, so we will be doing a little episode four at this. It's been four episodes, right? I can't even tell. Um, I think so. Yeah. We're going to do a chat over on Patreon, patreon.com. We're going to do a little exclusive bonus episode and talk all things season 13. So spoiler alert, if you, you know, watch and then come listen, uh, we'll see you on Patreon. Yeah, see you there. Um, What was the theme this week? It was like uh, trains for days. Yes, which obviously everyone immediately jumped to the RuPaul tweet where she said trans pride, but it was a train pride flag. I know. Which <laughs> why is there a train pride flag? I I don't know, but I it will that could be in my top ten of all time tweets when she <laughs> tweeted in support of trains rights. <laughs> Thomas the tank engine said <laughs> Train rights. Yeah, literally. Oh what god, was that fucking but yes, show it called? was. What what show? The one with the the fucking train that had the face on it. Uh, Th- yeah, Thomas the Engine. That shit was horrifying. The, yeah, that was yeah. It looked like a fucking flashlight on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. Now I'll never unthink it. Thank yeah, you well, for I didn't that think visual. that when I was a kid. I th- I'm just thinking it now. I'm like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Okay, that was don't so- don't give them any ideas. That's a million dollar flashlight idea. Oh god. <laughs> Well, use code Legends only. Yeah. <laughs> for anyway, where off. are we? Uh, Ow, I think I just cracked a rib like, laughing. Oh, Ow. God. Get it together. Um, well, speaking of trains for days, uh, I think that calls for a little segment that we like to call... High fashion! <laughs> oh, so auditorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh, my God. That's so high fashion. So high fashion. And now, quick shout out to... Um, Tina Burner, who um, always says, hit it. <laughs> but she hasn't said it on the show yet. Oh, maybe it's a copyrighted. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I don't think you can court. copyright that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cease and desist from Tina Burner and Michelle Visage in the same episode. <laughs> Iconic. Um, <laughs> yes, everyone. Our high fashion editorial for the week 
for me, I would like to award the girls at the inauguration for all of their mm. stunning, beautifully colored coats. Yes, largely purple or purple mm-hmm. hues. There was a Very theme. Into that. Very obviously a shout out to Mew Mews, uh, clearly. Um. <laughs> yes, the legends only purple and blue themed Moo Moos. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But um, no, they. it was very, very sharp, very chic. And also uh, the poet who spoke. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. High fashion editorial, but also beautiful. That poem had me like chills. Yeah, she definitely, I think, won the actual inauguration as far as the performance, not, not performances, the speeches. And um, I think it's a performance, right? Like, don't they yeah, say? Yeah, that's true. It is a performance. That's yeah. true. Spoken word. Yeah, no, I would say so. Just like from social media, just really one super powerful. And I was reading a bit about her and she was selected, I believe, by uh, our first lady, Jill Biden, actually, to do it. And she's won all these awards all the way up. And it's like no surprise that she was selected. She's totally killing the poetry game. Yeah, and her name's Amanda Gorman. If you want to, yeah, and I think she has one up, presidential should. aspirations as well. <gasps> very, very inspiring, and <sighs> and the look was also quite right for high fashion editorial. I hope we live to see the day where a woman is president. Uh, yeah, me too. It's, it's gonna happen. It is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. We're gonna make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, on a related note, but not at the inauguration, I'm going to give my high fashion editorial to Rihanna for taking out the trash uh, with her look. Um, if you didn't see it, she said that she was just helping out, uh, taking out the trash. <laughs> Hashtag we, we did it, Joe. <laughs> see, the thing is like, like Beyonce and Rihanna, like they make little nods to cultural moments sometimes where it's like gone with the wind fabulous where you're like, oh, you you watch Housewives or like you saw that meme. So that Rihanna look was, you know, that's how you should take out trash. That that was a look. And, you know, I'll also give a shout out to I think we deep dive into this on Patreon, but I have to give it up to Simone on Drag Race for her look this week. And just once again, challenging the theme of the runway with a very cool and innovative take. So it's really her her race to lose, but you'll, I'll talk about that more in the Patreon episode. Rihanna really is just effortlessly flawless. I mean... That's... Truly. That's it. That's the tweet. That is the tweet. It, it's just everything she does. I really... I feel... I, I, I just never have notes. I never have, like, any gripes with what she does. I'm always like, yep, that's... That's fucking amazing so it would be cool oh, if she did music notes. yeah the no is just where's the album yeah but <laughs> the notes that we're not hearing somebody noted that we have been through three presidents since the last album from rihanna and i didn't real, i didn't believe it at first and then i did the math and realized that that actually is true it's she anti came out with obama wow i just you can't rush perfection that's true so, we will have to wait and see on the next episode of Legends Only, Where's R9? We have to deep dive into all the R8. Oh, yeah. At some point. <laughs> we do. That'll be a fun series. We'll get there. We will get there. In the meantime, I guess it's time to talk about a not hypothetical new music, but actual new music. Yeah. <laughs> well, I already mentioned it earlier, but I would just like to once again plug Miss Kylie. The Real Groove remix EP is out now featuring the Dua Lipa remix as well as two other remixes, I believe, or three. I really like one of them, the Cut cut Something or Other. The, the Cheap Cuts remix into that. So yeah, go buy and stream and support the disco cause. And then for me this week, I have two recommendations. Um, one's new, one's not. The first one is a remix of Hey Boy from Sia, the Stav remix. And what's so cool about this is this guy was on TikTok making mixes of like Whitney and he did this really good one of Watermelon Sugar and he was able to make like an official mix. And this is his first one and he comes from TikTok. Like it's so fucking cool. I mean, that just demonstrates the power of TikTok these days. You can yeah. just be plucked out of TikTok obscurity and into official remix set that's crazy i know i was very inspired as you know someone who's trying to learn as t kygo you <sighs> are i'm flopping on the way week. okay well you i haven't had time your way. 
This... Everyone's going to be looking for that name in the next remix EP from our pop faves. Honestly, put happen. my Make Me remix on the 400th re-release of yeah, Glory. That's Glory remix reimagined, still the same 2016 album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like... I'm waiting. Yeah, well, I'll uh, get to work on... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finishing that and then also i want to do uh do you want to come over and then i oh, have yeah. an idea for like a lo-fi mix a lo-fi ep okay so you're just remixing glory is what i'm hearing no, well just two songs okay i'm practicing mm, i'm sure there will be no complaints yeah I'm anyway um the point being i'm still trying to teach myself this shit it's fucking hard so i really shouldn't be critiquing anyone's music ever again um <laughs> my second one is a song that's not old or not new, but it's newish. It's called Jaguar by Victoria Monet. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, Victoria had my second most, it's the same EP oh. uh, from last year, Experience with Khalid and S.G. Lewis, same release from last year, the Jaguar oh. EP. Highly recommend. Uh, yeah, she's... Supersonic Pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it came out uh summer and the one that let it <clears throat> well there's ass like that, but experience was the one that I could not shut up about. But Jaguar as well is fantastic. Yeah, it came on my uh like recommended for you or whatever, and I was like, oh my god. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> Your podcast co-host wouldn't shut the fuck up about this person. Do you want to finally listen? Honestly. <laughs> Well, I am glad that you are on the Jaguar train. That is awesome. Yeah, she's real. And she, Victoria Monet is like one of uh, Ariana's collaborators. Like the whole, um, she did, whatchamacallit, uh, she worked on Thank You Next and Seven Rings and all of that. Mm. So she's, she's quite the, the talent. Uh, yeah, and we also have uh, even more things that came out 2020 was kind of dominated by the pop star lady collaborations and that isn't ending which i'm very happy to see we have a collaboration that was teased a full year ago which is miss billy eilish and rosalia came together for her song now i think the funniest thing about this collaboration is that the comments are mostly like english people saying they can't understand billy and spanish speaking speaking people say they can't understand rosalia um <laughs> You know, this is a good blend of their sounds. It's very, it's very otherworldly, very soft-spoken, whispery. I don't know that I'll necessarily reach for this one that often. It's very sleepy and mysterious, but it's not really a bop. Right. Like, you, yeah, I feel that. It's cool. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's for euphoria. It's a cool, edgy, moody vibe. Lo vas a olvidar. It's just, you know, I think it's a good meeting in the middle of the two of them. But yeah, I think it's it's more cool and stylish than necessarily something I will listen to that much. But it's cool. Really, really cool. Moody. <laughs> <laughs> really cool and amazing. Really, really cool. And obviously stand them both. So nice job, ladies. Uh, and then we have another collab, which I did not see coming, although they have teamed up before. It is Ellie Goulding and Silk City, a.k.a. Diplo with new love and it appears ellie is the latest on the disco train now you're you're a big ellie fan yeah i um i'm a little uh a legend um stan <laughs> um i don't you're a little lights i yeah i <laughs> i still don't know how to pronounce the how the whatever it's called oh halcyon oh yeah so that um her but like oh my god goodness gracious <laughs> ladies and gentlemen her yeah <laughs> Oh my fucking god! That, I love that TikTok. That is such so a good TikTok. Much. We'll have to insert, but if you haven't seen Adele introduce her on SNL, it's now been used for everything. Ladies and gentlemen, her. I feel like that needs an official inauguration into the soundboard. Oh my god, it does. It actually fits perfectly well because it's I... also. It's very, she's a legend, but she's not someone you think about all the time. Yeah. Uh, You're like, oh. It's very that. Ellie Golding, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But my favorite, uh, <laughs> my favorite caption was like, uh, 45 minutes after talking to the drunk girl crying in the bathroom, and you bring her out to meet her friends. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, huh. <laughs> 
why is it so true? It's so funny. You realize so that's going to be me the second we are allowed to go back out to bars. Oh, I'm fully prepared. That girl is going to be me. <laughs> the girl in the mirror is you. Yeah, like I'm going to be that girl that talks to everyone. Oh, I know it. I'm I already fully am. prepared. <laughs> I Do know I- you are. Oh my God. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Do you remember that one time when I tried to purchase Lotus on that woman's yes. iPhone? Yes. And we she like almost in... killed me. It was a man, I believe. Oh. Oh, unless this is oh. a different time. Uh, I believe you were talking to a guy you were hitting on though. Oh. And you were buying Lotus on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm remembering it correctly, uh, well, we were at Barracuda. Yeah. Oh. And that was what you stayed until 4 a.m. And, uh, you yeah, know, you were, I was just trying to find a husband. You asked three people if they bought Lotus on iTunes that night. You, like, I remember you asked multiple people and you, like, brought it up on somebody's phone on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> we're all gonna have fun! That, yeah, and it was, like, probably 2016 or 2017. It was, like, not, it was not 2012 when Lotus had come out. Well, uh, that did they purchase is for it? Short. Clearly not. I well, that's exactly what you were saying to them. You were like, so, "Well, did you purchase it?" And then you brought it up on iTunes. Listen, it's like a game of guess who. I'm just trying to find. A man. It's an icebreaker. It's, it's basically like it's a all, fair you see question. All the men, and I'm like, <laughs> "Do you wear glasses?" No. Okay, you're down. Two. Did you purchase Lotus on iTunes? No. Okay. Tall glasses, you're out. Lotus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's your type. And three. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, God, I don't remember. Oh, Ellie Ellie. Goulding's new song. Yeah, she's cute. Yeah, it's fun, but I feel like it's like missing a punch. Mm. He he needs a little like oomph. Mm. Maybe like an extra piano. Well, if you're producing it, yes. I I, Listen, (laughs) fast forward to a year from now, I'm very curious where I'll be at. Jail. (laughs) For what? (laughs) One too many cease and desists. Oh, my God, that's so (laughs) true. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, I know. I, I agree with you. I felt like it, it feels very of the moment, but I don't necessarily think it's leading the moment. Um, no, I think it needs a remix. Yeah. It, it, well, there you go. <laughs> but you know, she's a cute girl. Uh, yeah. So there's new love from Ellie. And then the next one is, uh, Slater, who I think we most talked about with, oh me, oh my, my, oh, yeah, gonna oh, yeah. make you mine. <gasps> Oh and God, her remix should... of Gimme More is like all over TikTok, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, she has a new song called Troubled Paradise from an upcoming album, her debut album officially. And um, I think it's pretty cool. It's uh, very Kim Petrus adjacent, very, what is that world? I Just like Kim, Charlie, the new girls kind of territory. So do you guys love clubbing? Are you dancers? <laughs> Very that, very inspired, obviously, by our faves like Britney and Lindsay and like just that sort of, oh yeah, Paris. <laughs> Me if I was a pop star. <laughs> very that, very that. I think this is probably one of her best choruses in a while too. Like, I think it's as sticky as mine. So I, yeah, I like it. I'm into it. <laughs> All <What>? right. <laughs> no, you just didn't say anything else. <laughs> oh, I, well, I, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. This one's for the for the young girls. This is, you know, she's I just like associate her with like this um the generation under us. Like you know like the gays who love Charlie, who love Kim Petrus, like that world. Yeah. But also like influenced by our queens, our faves. like Heidi. Exactly. Brittany. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Well, good luck, gays. <laughs> Um, what else? So another new girl, actually, Griff, who I have been talking about a few times on Mew Muse. She's an up and comer and she has a song called Black Hole, which is not a Lindsay Lohan cover. I'm sorry to inform everyone, but it is really good. She consistently writes bops. I highly recommend Griff, G-R-I-F-F. Um, in that order. I'm into everything. B-I. In that C-T- order. Yeah. In that order. <laughs> exactly. Uh, she also did like a Disney advert uh over christmas like she sang a song for that and so she's getting her little placements here and there and i'm interested to see what she does next she just kind of consistently writes bops and i'm into it and she's still quite young so a lot of promising young ladies on the scene black hole by Lindsay lohan is a bop oh yeah just play black hole and this black hole make that like a little playlist back and forth yeah uh speaking of promising young ladies on the scene Last week, we introduced you to Olivia Rodrigo, who officially 
uh, debuted at number one and has been breaking an obscene amount of like streaming records and shit. It's it's kind of overwhelming. U.S. and global and global, uh, really intense. So we talked about how that song was formed because her now ex was with uh, pop princess Sabrina Carpenter, who decided to drop a thinly veiled response track called Skin, which is quite sassy. Now, is this like the Hillary vs. Lindsay of 2021? That is basically what I've told people is like okay. it's Hillary and Lindsay fighting over Aaron Carter. Iconic. Which... As my friend and former coworker Erica at Pop Crush wrote, like I just wish they were fighting over something more interesting than a man. Which I, oh God, I five thousand percent agree. Like I wish they were fighting over the like one of them bought Chromatica tickets and they're not giving. They're like, give me back my money. I <laughs> fighting with customer service at LadyGaga.com for still not yeah. getting a jockstrap. <laughs> Yeah, I just, you know, I there's a man in the middle of, the ne- of this, which is, like, annoying. But Sabrina, the, the lyrics are uh, very, like, he's my man and his skin's on me, touching my skin, basically. I really do like Sabrina. and We are I, frightened of Cornova. <laughs> yeah, there will be no kissing and touching. Yeah. But I really like Sabrina, and I really like her past records a lot. I do not think this is the better song of the two, unfortunately. Uh, by any means. I think it's a cute bop, but I think Driver's License is like much better and much more impactful if we're comparing the two. I am so embarrassing because I literally saw people talking about Sabrina Carpenter and I thought they were talking about the character from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. (laughs) How did I know this would happen? I was like, oh, Uh, she has a last name? Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, No. I'm old. Yeah. I feel like I feel like she's not coming across well in this love triangle. Like you've got a teenager writing a heartbreak song about this guy leaving her for the blonde who is Sabrina and Sabrina comes out with a song that's like, "Yeah, get over it." <laughs> and I feel like <laughs> and she's 21, so she's older and should maybe be a bit more mature. So I feel like, you know, it doesn't come across great and then like the dude, I don't care about i know he has a song out too about it I, i'm not i'm not looking that one up but yeah i don't know who else i mean i'm, had, like, I'm legendary it reminds me of um it was also like vanessa hudgens versus and zach efron versus somebody right was it ashley no like was it was that ever a rivalry vanessa I hudgens and ashley probably Tisman? was but everyone yeah, probably just I, made yeah. it up and then yeah, because that was like slightly the generation below. But then Brittany Christina you know, a little bit. Brittany Christina and Justin. Well, well, they didn't fight over Justin, but Brittany and Christina. Yeah, there's the teen queen saga continues with. Should we stunt and two. fight over a man? <laughs> and then we would come never out with a because we don't have we never have the same taste. I in know, men. literally. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like very bizarre if we did. Honestly, now that I think about it, I'm like, yeah. It wouldn't make any sense, does it? No. (laughs) It's never crossed. No, no. That's probably one of the reasons. Can you tell the girl, I I am such a good wingman, by the way. Yeah, you really are. I've gotten you laid so many times. (laughs) Iconic. You've assisted it. You've assisted, for sure. I have followed you around while you've told tall men to buy Lotus. I don't know if that's helped. No, it has not. I've been there. (laughs) Clearly not. Maybe I'm more, I'm probably just somebody who needs to put up a wall more. <laughs> Still, you went to move on to the next. <laughs> My God. Uh, but yes, you're right. So we've never had a uh, Joshua ba- Bassett Bennett. No, in we'll have to us. plan a new stunt soon. We will. We'll each come out with our There own is a singles. man actually who did come between them. <laughs> and her name is James Charles. Yes, everyone. The new queen of pop. <laughs> All right, let me just say something quick. Like, whoever did this did a really good job because it sounds really good. The production? Yeah, and the video is good too. Yeah, James Charles decided to inject himself into their drama by covering driver's license. (laughs) That's like, what? (laughs) Like, does he? It's always like, (laughs) driver's license. It's like, I, I, I can't. I can it. hear the acrylics crackling. Yeah. As he's, yes. I. Oh God. Do you know yeah. it? Though? There's always that like the. <gasps> right. <laughs> I'm horrified to listen back to this. <laughs> a singer. Yeah. She is a singer. 
Yes. Um, <laughs> and I I watched the whole thing, by the way. So don't even fucking come for me. Like I literally watched the whole thing. I follow. I support. Yeah. Highly entertained. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you said forever. Now I log on to TikTok alone on my street. Do you remember when he covered Dangerous Woman? <sighs> yes, I do. I I remember. Am not even going to try to impersonate that note. Can't do it. You know. A pop career was threatened a while back, so I think that is still in the works. I just love the idea of, like, James getting involved. <laughs> Literally, it just, yeah. like, pans to Sabrina and <laughs> yeah, Olivia. Like, uh, <laughs> what was that? They're, like, held captive in the backseat. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. He's going to make them put on Santa Claus outfits and dance to Jingle Bell Rock. Oh, for sure. So He's going to do the renegade to this song with them in the background. <sighs> and the Demelios are going to come in. And we're going to talk about it next week. <laughs> yep. God damn it. God damn it. This is where we are. Uh, we need to talk uh, about Dixie at some point, too. Yeah, she's making headlines, isn't she? <laughs> I didn't know she sang. I thought she TikToked or whatever. I... <laughs> I just... Wow, That's a we have deep in- dive episode right there. Ooh, D- Dixie D'Amelio? No. D- like, influencers oh. who sing. Oh, God. Yeah, I suppose so. I guess this is, like, I always try and relate it back. I guess this is their version of, like, Countess Luann, Money Can't Buy You Class, and, yeah. like, our reality queen. Like, even Heidi. Like, it's just having these influencers slash reality show people... I would do the same fucking thing. Like, to be very clear. Oh, for sure. If I had $2 million like Heidi Montag did, I would have done the same exact album. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I don't think James has a superficial in him, but we'll we'll have to wait and see, sister. (laughs) Uh, You never know. (laughs) Sisterficial. Oh. Oh, No. You say I'm some call me a bitch. Some call me a bitch. <laughs> oh no, we should write uh, the album. You, we could write Use the album. Use your words, writer girl. I'll produce it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be able to hear that song the same again. I can't as believe the, we just spoke Sisterficial into existence. I hate. I as hate the us. only person who streams <laughs> Superficial on Spotify still every single day, <laughs> it's now ruined. Um, oh. God. Know who else came out with a bop though? Oh, who? Trisha Paytas. Oh my god! With that like she's sad boy, two thousand five. She's having another moment on TikTok. Yeah, I'll say that. I literally was sitting in bed last night. It was like one twenty in the morning on TikTok, I... as one always does. <sighs> yep. And she was cosplaying a Domino's employee, and I was like, I want Domino's now. I mean, she's very influential. That's what she does. Yeah. She certainly influences you. Problematic queen. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's where we're at, everyone. We're at warring Disney queens and uh, James Charles, as always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the future, everyone. 2021. Welcome to the future. Welcome, sisters. I think that's probably everything that happened this week. A new president and a new James Charles cover. That's all we want. That's right. It? That's all we want. Peace and a full EP. But until next time... Until next time. Oh, well. Everyone at home, thank you for listening. Please stay safe, wear a mask, socially distance, stay responsible. Please, let's get through this together, safely and happily. Let's come together and have uh, festivals by next year. That would be fun. Oh my god, I'm so ready. My tits are already quivering. I know. But um, until then, we will see you on Discord, and we will see you soon. I can't. <laughs> I can hear it. I can literally hear. You say Some I'm official. I can hear the nails clicking. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>